so much for agreeing to be interviewed, Lauren. Uh, so the first question is just, who are you? Um, and like, how are you involved in co-ops, I guess? Uh, my name is Lauren Carafa, and I'm a co-owner at Brighter Days Collective, uh, which is a dog walking and pet sitting collective that um, works in Northwest DC. Uh, and I know that you used to work at the Maryland Food Collective. I did used to work at the Maryland Food Collective for like almost three years. I won't make you go through your whole history, but I <laughs> <laughs> figured that was, that was good to mention. How are you spending your time these days or how are you keeping your peace these days? Um, I'm watching too much TV. <laughs> um, I watched the whole series of Ozark recently, but, um, before that I was, um, like researching like financial, um, options for, for brighter days, um, during the pandemic. And, um, we did file an application for a grant and, but keeping my peace, that's not really what the question was. Um, well, either or both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't really, I've been going on walks, you know, and I've been like trying to make sure that my daughter does all her schoolwork and just kind of like going one day at a time. And like my, like my co-op, we still have weekly meetings. Uh, um, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you have any insightful thoughts when you go on your walks? I'm just wondering. <laughs> um, I'm sure I do. I can't think of any, <laughs> any right now. Um, usually when I'm out, like in the forest, I tend to think about, like, I tend to like pretend that I'm, from like thousands of years ago and there actually is no civilization and I just imagine like being of some ancient civil civilization and like conquering the area for the first time but that's just kind of like a fun fantasy <laughs> that I have I like that it's it's so weird like with just the changing times it's it's almost easy to like feel like there's no civilization when you're just kind of out and about and you see like two or three people and like, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely have similar thoughts out on walks. <laughs> I'm like, what if, what if I was just adventuring through here? Like millions, of, well, not millions, thousands of years ago. Yeah. All right. Next question. Have you seen anything inspiring as it relates to cooperation and the solidarity economy during these times? I have, we were contacted by a, like a new group called the Beloved Community Incubator, mm -hmm. um, who is like making partnerships with co-ops in DC, including Brighter Days. And um, there's a cleaning collective, I think it's called like El Hogar something. <laughs> I feel bad, I don't remember the names. And then there's a tech collective too. Um, but they are like, they've provided a lot of assistance for us, um, like filing um, for financial benefits. Mm -hmm. um, and they're also start, they've also started a fundraiser um, to benefit the three co-ops. Um, so I think that's really cool. Um, and there's been these like mutual aid groups that have popped up too, which I think is neat. Um, and I've started, um trying to dip my toes into that with um the pg county mutual aid network mm -hmm. i have a volunteer meeting tonight so i haven't done anything yet but i know they're like running groceries and supplies and stuff to people who need them and can't leave the house and just um being available for people in the community who need very like assistance with various things like i guess there's also community members who are helping other um community members like fill out applications for for unemployment or for insurance and stuff and I think that's really cool that people are just like taking that up on their own yeah the the two or three co-ops that you said brighter days is uh involved with were you guys kind of networked before um the pandemic hit or was that we, like recent development 
it's a recent development. Like we were not interacting with um, those cooperatives, but they somehow had a connection to the the community incubator. Um, That's really cool. I can like give you, I can like email you a link to that fundraiser, which has the names of the co-ops on it. Cool. If you want. Yeah, that sounds good. And kind of segueing into the next question, I guess, can you describe one fruitful change as it relates to cooperation in the solidarity economy uh, that you think might arise as a result of the pandemic? And you can talk about broadly, or I was even just thinking uh, with these other co-ops that you're now in a network with kind of, um, do you kind of see that continuing uh, once business returns to normal? For sure. Um, they, yeah, I think people are seeing this as an opportunity to kind of push like environmental policies that are better and also just generally like, like mutual aid and cooperation. Um, um, it, like, I don't, I worry that it's not enough because I think also like the federal government government is becoming like more fascist in this time. So that's scary. But, um, I do hope that brighter, I feel like brighter days was kind of isolated before. And I hope that we continue working with the beloved community incubator because, um, I don't, they've been like super helpful. I, and I hope that writer days can help like give back to you in some way. Mm -hmm. I still remember a year ago when, when brighter days, or I guess it was more than a year ago, but I remember the, the donation that brighter days gave to the Maryland food collective. Uh, oh yeah, we did do that. <laughs> how we found out about them, right? In the first place. About yeah. Or they, they were sending, they sent emails to us, but um, at the co-op, but yeah, I remember that. Um, we do like on a yearly basis, give donations to different organizations. Like we've given donations to, um, Casa de Maryland too, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, but, and like other, uh, organizations for undocumented, in, in, ugh, I can't talk, undocumented immigrants. Mm -hmm. Um, I just remember that meaning a lot to me, like as a as a worker owner at the Maryland Food Collective, when we were like out of the blue on our on our fundraiser page when we were struggling. It was like this other local co co op, like the random like DC Dog Walkers Collective, and they're like here solidarity, and we're like, oh, that's awesome. So yeah. it's good to know that that you guys do that regularly. Yeah, and I think staying connected is is really helpful especially for like bureaucratic things because a lot of people who are in co-ops are not like super informed about like financial the financial like act like financial documents and taxes and shit stuff like that um and and like having a bigger network um that we can tap into to like help us with our accounting and stuff is very is very useful and then we can be there also to provide skills if, if we have skills that other co-ops don't have to help out yeah that's really good do you have anything else you wanted to add because i think that so far you answered all the questions i had um or any last words <laughs> no, I mean, I guess I just, I do, there's been like a lot of inspiring rhetoric and organizing around like divestment from fossil fuel companies and, and stuff like that. So I just hope that that's the, that we go in that direction more and not the neo-fascist direction, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's clear, at least under this administration, we can't really rely on the Oh, yeah. federal government. No, 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 no. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again so much for agreeing to be interviewed and for giving me a lovely interview from a worker owner's perspective. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. Thanks. <laughs>